Kieran's return meant that the Academy was given a hard talking to by the future Marquis as they had put Camellius in danger. While walking through the Academy grounds, Camellius Camellia finds a peaceful shack and a sleepy Claude. The two share a cute moment as they lean closer to each other, comparing the scents they have. But he's not the only bachelor looking for Camellius' hand as Ian sneaks up on the beautiful blonde where in the sweet orange afternoon, he also confesses his love and affection for the girl posing as a boy. He proposes to help her get into the slums of Louvre and as he spots the shadow of Claude watching the two of them, he irritates him further by advancing to her. In the sparkling summer noon, the bright lake reflected the gemstone eyes of Camellia shining to reflect the figure of a lightly clothed Claude inviting her to take a swim together. The two share some playful conversation as he tells her that it seems that she is not a child anymore as she says that she knows how to take care of herself. Leaving, Claude meets up with Wade and as the prince asks his whereabouts he says that he found a beautiful thing who is actually a nightmare because it seems that he has fallen for something that he shouldn't have. Seeing the true situation, the prince entertains his feelings of doubt. The nobles gather and talk about the events that happen praising Claude for his swift guidance over the operation. Marilyn Shelby becomes too infatuated with the thought but reality slaps her as Claude constantly looks at Camellius and ignores her advances. On the other hand, Camellia's Camellia shrugs off Torin's persistence in asking for an apology because he claims that she insulted him first despite knowing that she was the beautiful woman at the academy. It lasts up until the best brother Kieran saves the day, having a talk back with Torin as the charming black-haired Bale comforts the irritated blonde. Women also speak about how the younger brother, Camellius, is almost catching up and surpassing the older brother, Kieran. This infuriates the lady as she insults Laura, scheming further on how to punish her bastard daughter. Now the older men of the empire talk about the politics of the neutral territory between the neighboring country, as a fresh batch of precious stones have been shipped to their possession. Among them, a new character is introduced to the story the patriarch of the house Bale mentions how he misses his son. The orange-haired maid informs Camellius that the ruler of the north, Grand Duke Ihar, and her father, Marquis Gillard have visited the capital, Ethier. Along with this, a rumor from Marilyn Shelby that she will be engaging with the hand of Claude in marriage. To this news, the blonde is a bit baffled but her thoughts further spiral after an invitation from the evil doctor who kidnapped her as he reveals that he knows her true identity. As the event gets into motion, Prince Ian finally reveals and insists on Camellia's hand in marriage. With the Marquis and Lady dealing with the brunt of his proposals, the Lady is often dismissed as it is known that he hates the girl to have a secure life. It is also revealed that the Geyer territory has titled the controversial neutral territory to Prince Ian. Kieran tries to sway his silver-haired friend to undo his decisions but the two argue on how Camellia's life should turn, if it's better for her to stay as a girl or a boy. At last, Ian also reveals to Kieran his distaste for Claude as he also is obsessed with her affection. With his father's return, Claude is concerned with the assassins after his father, where each one chooses to kill themselves to not reveal the mastermind. He makes a little chat with Ian as the two share a great deal of concern for a possible war. In a different scene and dressed in formal clothing, the sleek look of the blonde hair and the black-haired are like ornaments in the library. As they share a precious bond, talking about their relationship, Marilyn Shelby orders to search for Claude, suspecting him of being together with Camellius. Wanting Marilyn to see the two together, Claude takes the initiative and pulls her into a hugging position. Furious and defeated, Marilyn leaves. The couple shares their congratulations on the wedding of Kieran and Claude's sister, Rosina, where the handsome black-haired guy invites Camellius to a secret childhood place with a good view of the celebration. However, their happy moments are shattered as being left alone in the room. The blonde-haired beauty is harassed by Marilyn, shouting and pulling on her clothes to reveal the truth if she truly is a man. But even as she defends herself, Marilyn slaps her. The sound makes Claude run and finds that the red-haired girl is playing victim claiming she was harassed. However, he knows the truth and his eyes flash nothing but disdain for Shelby. The incident was heavy on her and as he comforts her, they both lean to share a kiss. But terror swiftly erupts as Claude's father is poisoned, and on his deathbed, he grants all his position to his only heir, the now Grand Duke Claude Delihar. But with this title, comes the sad reality and responsibility. He requests the imperial family to wage war on the foreign country Geyer while also pinpointing that it is also the house Shelby that conspired together with them as they control the poison tea leaves delivery. Ian, 
suspecting that his brother has poisoned the duke, asks Camellia to take his hand and escape to Geyer as this is the ripe time, but Kieran halts them as Ian promises to come back for her. With all this heartbreak and attempts to put up a strong front, Claude rests his tired head on Camellia's. As the funeral of Maximilian del Ihar looms, the pretty demeanor of our female lead overlooks the window and spots the imperial tailor from before. As he was only one of the few who knew her true identity, he revealed that he was the one who sent the letter from before, and like the rainbow in the sky, he offered her the clues to what she was looking for her mom. At night, Claude comes to visit the blonde beauty and he wants to apologize about their previous kiss. However, the confused Camellius is troubled that her identity prevents her from being true and not expressing the same emotions to him because he's supposed to be a man. Still, as she sleeps, the new duke finally sees her secret identity. Her breasts are shaped exactly that of a woman. He also left his family brooch to the sleeping lady and this act meant that after his return from war, she would be its caretaker, signifying that she was his soon-to-be wife until he returned. Marilyn starts her own breakdown when the Imperial Palace points the blame on her house for betrayal. But as if her antics are not enough, she tells the lie that she was harassed by Camellius to Rosina. Claude's younger sister looked disappointed as her friend showed crazy tendencies. Rosina discusses this with Kieran and he says to ignore her ramblings for he will personally go to Claude on the battlefield to ask for a written testimony proving this is false. The two brothers, Kieran and Camellius, go to the nearest territory where the first signals of war are already happening. As the beautiful blonde goes to his tent, Claude immediately rushes in for a passionate kiss. Still unknown to the girl that he already knows her identity, she confronts him if he prefers men. But his strong and only answer is that he prefers Camellius. Underneath the night sky, Camellius thinks about the possibility of being together with Claude, realizing that her feelings are also true. For their farewell, the couple share a heartwarming farewell, realizing that this might be her final chance with the dangers of war. The beautiful blonde finally confesses her feelings to the soldier and he in turn, keeps her blade as a memento he will return after the battle. Faced in total judgment, Marilyn is now officially accusing Camellius of harassment in front of Rosina and Kieran. But her harsh words come back biting to her as Claude's statement is obviously not on her side. After a meltdown, the guards take her away leaving Camellius and the two couple together. But Rosina asks why Claude left her his brooch, questioning if their relationship of a man-to-man -man should be allowed in the royal court. Finally, Camellius bravely confesses her lifelong secret that she is Camellia to which Rosina's reaction is that of love and excitement with her plans to make Camellia the most beautiful belle of the royal court. Deciding to look through the clues that the tailor gave her, Camellius Camellia goes to the slums but is shocked to confront the lady, Anastasia Bale, who relentlessly shames her for her innocent actions. Her feelings are intensified now that Kieran and the Marquis Bale look at her disdain for her evil actions. She threatens to kill her mother if she doesn't follow her plans to have a funeral for Camellius, to which the poor beauty is like a flower, feeling defeated by her stepmother's actions. Despite the sadness, Pai Pai, her best friend and maid comforts her and she comes back with a strong determination, willing to graduate academy and work for herself in the future. A time lapse happens and the beautiful locks of Camellius Camellia finally grow, and it can be seen that she's writing a letter for her beloved mother. After three years, the academy is reopening and hosting the graduation ceremony where Camellius graduates with the highest distinction the valedictorian. As Rosina grows fond of Camellius, they share a sisterhood that always delights her feelings. Nearing the end of the war, a final challenge is brought to the battlefield as the Marquis Bale is found to be taken hostage. As Prince Wade and Claude discuss the next step, Ian Sergio steps in to help on the condition that the Royal Highness will acknowledge his marriage proposal to Camellia. The three all know about her true identity and the Geyer Prince also wishes to not force this decision on Camellia but just to receive a blessing. This irritates Claude as he has no choice but to agree as they need to save her father, so he punches Ian in the face as Prince Wade sighs in contentment. For the graduation ceremony, Lady Bale looks as if she wants to attend, which makes the hopeful female lead glimmer with hope that she is accepted but her schemes are revealed when Camellius Camellia asks about her invitation to the event. She is publicly rejected to receive her distinction on the spot, making people whisper that she is just showing off and displaying no care for her father who was taken hostage as of the moment as she is celebrating her own selfish desires. But she twists this upside down as she asserts her position as a representative of the house Bale who is there to display a strong image that they are resilient. The royal tailor meets her again, 
secretly discussing her mother, in which a mystery is unboxed when he reveals that they are part of a group of bandits at Louvre whose aim is to overthrow the aristocracy. Behind the scenes, the tailor seems suspicious, planning to use Laura as bait, probably so that their group can gain more money from the nobles through Camellias. Via a secret message, the tailor asks her to meet where he promises to point her to her true mother. That night, the beautiful lady in hiding wakes up with the wildest dream of finally kissing the handsome Duke Claude but she realizes that they have already come back during that night blushing even more after realizing that it was not a dream but she actually seduced him into kissing in reality. During the victory procession, Camellius is left alone and as she feels sadness that she is not truly part of the family, the Grand Duke she was waiting for, hugs her from behind as they talk about last night's funny moments. But that same feeling of loneliness doesn't stop as it haunts the elegant blonde at the grand feast but yet again, Claude comes to save the night as he holds her tight. However, this time, some onlookers see their embrace, sowing the first seeds of suspicion. Happening fast, the two find themselves in a room all by themselves away from the noise of the nobles and family. The Duke says that he knows all about her secret and so tonight was the night where they both revealed everything to each other. But before anything, a furious Claude storms out and goes to punch Kieran after seeing the bruises in the binder that Camellia was wearing all these years. At this, her brother self-reflects that he should do the right thing moving forward. But after rushing outside, Claude returns to continue to appease the woman who has been hiding all these years and in that room, the scene of love floats through every corner as they share one bed. But trouble finds itself in the two as Prince Wade informs them in the morning that there has been a robbery of the diamonds that are in the property of the house Bale where Camellius Camellia is blamed by Lady Bale as the suspect. The other three Bale family members discuss and as the two men protect Camellius Camellia, the lady walks out. With this, Kieran reveals to his father that back in the day it was not Laura who brought her to the freezing lake that resulted in his sickness but he vividly remembers her mother. A delivery of a vase with jasmines is sent to Camellius Camellia and as she realizes this is part of the note that was given to her by the tailor, Claude breaks the suspicious vase and finds a few of the stolen diamonds. This means that someone out there is framing the poor beauty. She leaves for the arranged meeting between her and Carl the tailor, where in their humble shop, a secret passage to the headquarters is opened. Along the way, he persuades Camellius to join their cause of overthrowing the aristocracy as he says that the lowborn only do this violence because of their living situations and nobles influence that. She is conflicted but she remains her composure, only wanting to see her mother. And from a view of the window, there she is her long-lost mother surrounded by children humbly playing and laughing around her. She is informed that her mother sacrificed so much for her, losing her ability to walk in the process going through hardships of finding her, and continuously going to their estate until her legs gave out. Also, Carl informs her that it is Anastasia Bale who is framing her, as her only intention is to give the poor daughter a soul-crushing life. This makes her contemplate what her place should be, among the nobles where she realizes she can never fit in with her true self, or with her mother. But she knows that second option will rob her mother of the content and happy life she is living in now. Leaving she is confused about where she truly belongs, but it seems that the answer has come when Claude reaches for her hand asking her to close her eyes as he carries her outside. Unknown to her a crime scene has formed at the entrance of the shop. At home, she is distraught to see her best friend, Pipeye, handcuffed by the guards as they confiscate and intercept the letters that were sent by Camellius Camellia. Claude then saves the day, as they both use logic and he publicly announces his testimony that he was with the second bail son during the night of the robbery. But as the guards say there is still a missing letter, Claude reveals that he has the last one. In private, he shares the secret that Rosina was intercepting her letters. This is because they want to protect Camellius from being discovered as a bastard daughter from the slums of Louvre by the royal family. Her marriage with Claude will also not happen as the nobles hate that background if the word gets about her true identity. Like the girl boss that she is, she throws the letters to the fire, confronting Claude that he didn't really consider her feelings and her upbringing. She says that even without these letters, she is still a bastard daughter from the slums, signifying that he should know how to fight for what he truly wants. A letter reaches Anastasia Bale that the investigation has concluded without Camellius Camellia as a suspect. On top of being susceptible to blackmail, her fury knows no bounds. She orders an invitation for Prince Ian Sergio and tells a servant to prepare the plan, promising an evil scheme that will tarnish her hated stepdaughter's name gravely.